certainly what has become clear is that the Netanyahu government um, has not been um, willing to enter into a ceasefire agreement except on its own absolute terms. And perhaps this will, uh, these uh, protests and, and demonstrations and, and advertised strikes in Israel, if they gain enough momentum, can create pressure um, on Netanyahu and the government to um, pursue the kind of uh, ceasefire deal that would see um, easing of the humanitarian uh, disaster that's unfolding in Gaza and also the return of the Israeli hostages. But also from Beirut, where, where I am, uh, it could have a great knock-on effect for regional stability as well, because um, as we know, for the past 11 months, there have been ongoing clashes between Hezbollah and Israel across the border that have been steadily increasing in intensity. And uh, Hezbollah, while it has vowed to continue um, with those clashes until there's a permanent ceasefire in Gaza, has also given clear indications that it intends to stand down once a permanent ceasefire is reached. So uh, there's an incentive, uh, not just for Israel, um, but also for the region in general, uh, to calm down uh, regional tensions and to restore stability, um, starting with a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. It's pretty clear that time is running out to get a deal done and leaders on all sides are under major pressure now. We've just seen these extraordinary images of hundreds of thousands of people on the street in Tel Aviv protesting against Netanyahu's handling of this. But of course, at the same time, pressure on President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, as well as Hamas, to push forward some kind of an agreement here. So what do you expect this to mean for hostage talks, which have so far really been nothing but a failure? Sure. I, mean, I think that the issue right now is that the US mainly, uh, but along with supporters in this national community, needs to take real leadership and urge the Israeli government and Hamas, of course, to iron out any final details and to press forward to a deal. Now, these protests and demonstrations and strike actions can give momentum to those efforts. So we know, for example, that the United States clearly has leverage over the Israeli government. Uh, both in terms of its political support, but also in terms of logistical and technical support. So uh, the time is for, I mean, President Joe Biden, who is still in office, can exercise that leverage, but also clear indications from both of the presidential candidates ahead of November as soon as possible that a ceasefire deal must be struck uh, without any further delay uh, could create even further pressure on the, um, both parties to, to reach the deal that's so desperately needed both for Israel and for the people of Gaza. And of course, there's still plenty of sticking points in the ceasefire talks that have taken place so far. We're also seeing Axios as Barack Ravid report that Biden may actually put forward a final proposal this week. In your view, what needs to change in order to get a deal done? Because it seems as if there is much more that divides these groups than unites them at this point. Sure. It seems to me as though, and of course, each, um, each side in the negotiations will have its own narrative, but it seems to me as though the key sticking point at the minute between uh, Israel and Hamas is the withdrawal of Israeli troops and on what terms from Gaza. So clearly there needs to be some movement on that particular sticking point. Um, and also I think that that will require um, a rethink from Israel's leaders about and, and particularly within the government, that is, about what exactly they're trying to achieve from prolonging this war. Because we know that there is lots of opposition uh, to continuing the war, uh, both amongst Israeli's political establishment, but also amongst the security establishment. So there's clearly um, a basis there for the international community to work with within the Israeli system to press forward for this deal. Obviously, it will require interlocutors who have connections with Hamas to make sure that Hamas honours its own obligations under a deal. But these, this particular issue, which seems to be the latest, which is this, like, on what terms would Israel withdraw troops from Gaza, needs to be resolved as soon as possible. And it seems as though there is a resolution there. I mean, if having troops in the Philadelphia corridor and maintaining them was so important, why was this demand not made 10 months ago? Uh, I think this is an example of where there's a, a schism within the Israeli leadership about how to handle the talks, and there needs to be a clear vision which moves towards concluding a deal and uh, moving to, to a much more stable stage for the region.